Hi guys. This is D Igoratech. Today, we are going to download and install GNS3 on Windows 11. Before we proceed you need to understand the two components of GNS3. First is the GNS3 client which is available for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS operating systems. Second is the GNS3 server or GNS3 VM which you will run with a hypervisor such as VMware Workstation Pro, VirtualBox, VMware ESXi and Microsoft Hyper-V. Let's proceed. We will check first my system specifications and operating system. I'm using this old laptop for this demo which is Core i5 5th generation. 8GB of RAM and my operating system which is Windows 11 Pro. Now we will download the GNS3 client. Open your web browser and go to gns3.com. Click free download. In this window, you will choose which operating system you want to install the application. We have the option for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux operating systems. During the time of this recording, the latest version available is 2.2.22. You can check the installation guide if you want. Now, click on download. To download the application, you need to have an account, this is a free account. You can create account if you don't have one or you can simply log in if you already have an account. You can see I'm already logged in. Now click on download. While waiting for it to download, scroll down and at the bottom you will see the option to download the GNS3 VM. Click on it. You will see the hypervisors available to download. I will cover the GNS3 VM installation in the next video. Let's check the downloaded file, click on show in folder. You can see the file name is GNS3 and the version which is 2.2.22. Regardless of what version you downloaded, the installation process is all the same. Now double click on it to install the application. We will leave all the installation process to default. Click on next. You can read and you must agree to the license agreement. Click on next. In this window, you can see the option for GNS3 VM which I will cover in the next video. Now, expand the tools to view the GNS3 core applications. All of these are recommended and will be automatically installed with this GNS3 client. Click Next. We will leave the destination folder to default. You can see the space required which is 305.7 MB, you can also see your available space. Click on Next. It will now proceed with the installation. This takes time so I will fast forward the video. Notice the shortcut application automatically created on desktop. Now, we need to install WinPCAP. Click next, agree to the terms of the agreement. Click install. Click finish. It will also install the NPCAP. Click I agree. Click install. Click next. Click finish. It will now download and install the Wireshark 64-bit version 3.2. Make sure you won't be disconnected to the internet during this installation process. I will fast forward the video. Now check the box to agree then click accept enter your email address then click continue installation complete setup completed successfully click next I don't want to get solar winds tool set so I will choose no click next since the start GNS3 is already checked, click finish, and the GNS3 application will automatically start. We will skip this window for now so we will click cancel. 
To minimize the console, click on the dots icon then simply drag it down. From the server's summary, notice that the color is green. It means the startup process was successful. You can see the computer name, the CPU usage and RAM usage. Now, we need to restart the application every after installation to avoid errors. Click on close. Now launch the application again. This is very important, every time you launch the GNS3 application, wait for the server's summary to turn green. If it's red or blank even after few minutes or if you encounter some errors then do the following steps. First is restart the GNS3. If issues still persist, proceed with the next step. Restart your PC or laptop. And the most common issue is it's been blocked by the antivirus or firewall, so make sure to permit and exclude the GNS3 application from your antivirus and firewall. You can also check the startup summary to view if there are some errors encountered. To do this, go to help, GNS3 doctor. You can check the startup summary from here. In my case, we can't see any errors, it means the startup was successful. You can also run your task manager to check the GNS3 process. Now, let's create a very simple topology to verify if the GNS3 application is working properly. We can restart the application again. Every time the GNS3 starts, it will ask you to create or open new project. You can enter your desired project name, let's name it my first project then click OK. You can also go to file, then choose new blank project. Enter your desired project name. We will enter my first project again. Click OK. It will show us some error, project my first project is opened and cannot be overwritten, we encountered this error since we enter the same project name. Click OK. Notice the error at the bottom and the right side of the page and at the top. Every time you encounter some error you will receive some notifications and pop-ups. Let's now create a very simple topology. First is we will add a switch. Go to Browse Switches. Now, click and drag the Ethernet switch on the topology. Next is go to End Devices. We will add two VPCS. Click and drag it to the topology. Now, to reposition the devices, you can simply, click, drag and drop it where you want. To connect all devices, click on Add a Link. Click on PC1 then click on the switch to add AA link. Click on PC1, select F0 then click on the switch to add a link. Click on the switch then click on PC2 to connect both devices. You can change the symbol of each device based on your preference. Right click on the device then select change symbol. We have some few options for the symbols. We will use affinity circle blue. Click on it to expand and scroll down to search for client or simply use the filter, type client. Now click on it then click OK to apply. Next is the switch symbol. We will use square blue for the switch. You can search for the switch symbol. Click on it then click OK. We can also show the interface labels. This is very useful for us to determine which port it is connected. You can drag the labels to reposition. If you prefer to use the grid then you can enable it as well. Go to view, enable snap to grid, click view again then enable show the grid. Now, you have a guide to make your topology more pretty. To remove the grid, click on view then uncheck show the grid. You can zoom in and zoom out. Now, let's turn on all devices. 
But first, take a look at the topology summary, you can see the nodes color are red for both PC. Now, click on start resume all nodes. Yes to proceed. Notice the node status will turn to green, which means the devices are already running. Let's now open console for all devices. This is used to configure the devices. Click on it. Notice that only one device showed up. You can restart the console again. Now you can see both devices which is the PC1 and PC2. By default, the font is very small. To change the font, click on the three dots sign or menu. Settings General Under fonts and colors, click on launch putty. Go to appearance. Under font settings, click change. Let's set the font size to 22 and font style to bold. Click OK. Now, go to session. Click on default settings then click save. Click cancel. Click save to apply the changes. Details saved successfully. We have to close the solar putty then open it up again. Click on console to launch the solar putty again. You can now see that the fonts are bigger. You can edit or resize the font by doing the same process again. Now, let's do some test. We will set first IP address for both PC. For PC1 we will give the IP address of 192.168.1.1 with slash 24 subnet mask. It will check for duplicate IP address, if none then it will assign that IP address. For PC2 we will give the IP address of 192.168.1.2 with the same subnet mask. Once we set the IP address with the same subnet mask then we should be able to ping each other. Let's test to ping PC2 from PC1. Ping 192.168.1.2 Success. Now, let's ping PC1 from PC2. Ping 192.168.1.1 Success. This means, the installation was successful. Lastly, we have to save the configuration. GNS3 won't automatically save the configuration unlike Packet Tracer. We will save it for both PC. To prove that everything is working, let's do a quick test. We will close the GNS3 then open it back again and we will check our topology. To shut down all devices, Simply click on stop all devices. Click yes, you will see the topology summary change to red again since we turn it off. For the switch it's always green. Let's restart the GNS3. Wait for the server's summary to turn green. To open the previous project click on recent projects. You will see our previous project which is my new project.gns3. Click on it and wait for it to load. If you want to start specific device, right click on it then choose start. But if you want to start the whole topology then click on the start resume all nodes. Same goes with the console. Right click on the specific device then click console. Or you can click on the console button to start solar putty for all devices. Now, let's test to ping PC2 from PC1. Ping 192.168.1.2 Success. Ping PC1 from PC2. Ping 192.168.1.1 Success. 
We can now verify that everything worked. Even the configuration has been saved. You can check my other videos for GNS3, VMware, FortiGate and Cisco tutorials. Well, that's all for today's demonstration and I really hope you like this video. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials, thank you and see you in the next video.